welcome to this beautiful Friends Meeting House and welcome to uh, Influencing, which is the main focus of today. My name is Jan Kitching and I'm one of the Greater Manchester Older People's Network Action Group members. Bit of a mouthful, but there we are. Uh, welcome, a warm welcome to everybody to our event today. Um, it's fantastic, it genuinely is fantastic to see so many people here today uh, gathered together to talk about older people. Our event today is about influencing and one of the most important ways that we can influence is by bringing people together, having conversations and finding out what we have in common and the goals we share. We've asked people to sit with others from their local area today, so you may or may not know the people on your table. If you don't, you should do by the end of today, and hopefully you'll carry on uh, networking with them when you get back to your own borough. Um, this is so that we can help you link who might be able to, people who might be able to support you, or you might be able to support if you're a professional. Uh, later, you're going to have the opportunity to hear from and engage with people who are leading on work for older people at the Greater Manchester and even the national level. Uh, you should all have agendas in your pack. Um, we're going to try our very best to keep to the agenda today. Um, this morning we're going to hear from some other members of the action group, Elaine and Elizabeth, and then from Liz, our uh, network facilitator at MAC. After that we'll be spending time talking in our table groups and discussing the, discussing the priorities of older people at the current time and working out the best questions to ask our speakers this afternoon. Before we break for lunch, we'll be hearing from Councillor Jude Wells from Stockport, who's the Assistant Portfolio Holder for Aging, for aging and Equalities. Lunch is 45 minutes, uh, and that will also give you time to visit our marketplace, uh, which is back out into the entrance and uh, bottom right, and there you'll have a chance to sign up or learn more about um, the Equalities Board, or to actually sign up for our Old, old People's Network. Um, there's a very interesting map uh, on the display of how many membership is spread across the whole of Greater Manchester and you will see very clearly um, that it's not at all equal and we're really keen to promote the membership of older people who are out in the boroughs. Um, I think one of the problems is that people think if they sign up they're suddenly going to get made chairman or treasurer um, and it's not the case really. You can sign up and just receive newsletters. There is no Commitment, but it's about make, uh, helping people in the boroughs understand what's happening at the Greater Manchester level. Whoops. Um, as I said, we've got 45 minutes for lunch uh, where you can visit the marketplace and find out about what's going on. Uh, at 1.25, there will be a fire alarm test. So you can view that as your theatre bell to return to your seats at 1.30. <laughs> um, so after lunch we've got some music to welcome us back. Um, then we'll hear from some national charities campaigning on issues for older people. That's Age, U Age UK and Independent Age. We have a speaker from Transport for Greater Manchester uh, and also from the Health and Social Social Care Partnership. And then finally, we'll be hearing from Greater Manchester Mayor Andy Burnham. So before I introduce uh, my fellow members, I just want to run through some housekeeping. My notes here say there are no fire drills today, but just be aware that there will be this test. Um, if it does happen to turn into a proper evacuation, follow the green signs at the back and front of the building. 
If you need to take, there aren't any breaks in the morning and afternoon session, so if you need to, please feel free to leave the room. Um, there's water and hot drinks available in the hallway, and if you need to take some time out during the course of the day, there is a quiet room available out there as well. Uh, for those of you that use Twitter, we're using the hashtag GMOPN Influencing. Uh, I'd now like to introduce Elaine and Egbert, another of the Action Group members, who's going to talk to you about the history of the network and some of the achievements over the last five years. <coughs> As Jan has said, I'm Elaine and I'm also an Action Group member. And it's so nice seeing so many of you here this morning. I have seen a lot of familiar faces. And I'm sure there are also new people who've come this morning. And for those who, who is not very familiar, and this is your first Over Network meeting, I want to talk a little bit about the network, what it does, why it is so important, and how we are working to represent the voice of all the people across Greater Manchester. The Greater Manchester um, All the People Network is supported by MAC, Manchester Support Organization for the Voluntary and Community Sector. The net network was established as part of the Ambition for Aging program in 2015, and I have been part of the action group since that time. However, along with many other people in this room, I've been involved with work to champion the voices of older people for a long time. And when the network formed, it was very much about bringing the existing expertise of older people and building on that. What difference, what's the difference about Greater Manchester Older People's Network to anything that we have before? It is the fact that it represents a much wider area. We started out before devolution and as reflecting the eight councils involved in ambition for aging. The program, but Older People's Network was always about being an independent voice. And it soon, as soon as the devolution became a reality, our action group agreed that we needed representation um, from the other areas. We wanted to be able to make a difference for older people right across the area. We want to learn from best practice in all areas and support each other to make things better for everyone. Older People's Network is about giving older people a voice to express the issues that are important to us. It's about recognizing that we are experts by experience and involving us in strategic conversations that are going to affect us all. It's about recognizing that as older people, we are equal partners. It's all about working together. So far, in the network, we've achieved a massive amount. We've held regular big events like this one and talked about many of the key issues for older people, such as housing, <coughs> transport, health campaigning, participation, ageism, and being age proud. We've written reports after each of our events and we've made recommendations. We brought these recommendations together to produce a key insight booklet that organizations and policymakers can refer to when they need a quick way of making sure priorities for older people are being reflected. This doesn't replace the need to actually engage with older people. Whenever new initiatives are being considered, but it's another tool that people can use in a way of making sure that we influence as many people as possible. We've developed working groups on housing, and we've also developed on health and social care and transport. And we've worked with the Health and Social Care Partnership, Care and Repair England, the Manchester University, 
Buzz Manchester, among many others. <coughs> it's also lovely to see many people here from these organizations. The network has continued to grow. In the last two years, it has doubled its size from 200 to 400 members. We have representation from across all the 10 local uh, 10 Greater Manchester areas, and we are recruiting new members, as Jan has mentioned, to share their knowledge, to share their ideas, and to share their experiences. Over the past year, we have been focusing on outreach work and speaking to potential members in some of the outer boroughs where it's harder for people to get to central Manchester. We held one of our participation events in Lee in May, and we've attended various older people's fairs and events in Bolton, in Rochdale, and in Trafford. In March last year, the network won an award for campaigning and advocacy, recognizing what we have done to support older people to have a voice. It was fantastic to go along to receive this award on behalf of the network. I am now going to hand over to Elizabeth, who is going to talk about the importance of participation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Good morning. Again, as most of you know about our network, we have action groups. We meet every six weeks where we, where we discuss the projects the older, the older people network are currently involved in and what we plan to do in the future. We've got, got a current eight members from Greater Manchester. We've currently got eight, forgive me, I'm a little bit nervous. We've currently got group members from most of Greater Manchester area and would like to and take on Oldham, Wigan and Tainside to make sure that we're fully representative. Then we have our big event like this one. The network also advises a lot of different kinds of opportunities to get involved in. Members have been engaged in hiring activities and have opportunities to influence in different ways, which is a great move forward for other people. <clears throat> I will just run through a few. Members delivered a workshop on national ageing differently, which was a great success last year. We participated in the Greater Manchester Doing Ageing Differently conference. We travelled to London to participate in the House of Lords Committee on Intergenerational Fairness and Provision. We held new, new research on driverless cars. Yes, driverless cars. Can you see it in the future? <laughs> with Leeds and Manchester University. We, sh we supported the short listing process for health and care camp champion awards. A member joined the Sona Radio Steering Group and now presents a regular radio program. Elaine regularly attends the Greater Manchester Aging Steering Group. Jan is now a member of AGK National Policy Group. Through an opportunity advertised in the local newsletter, I recently took part in a programme with the BBC on criminal justice. So if you see my face on the TV, you know where it was. It's me. I do photographs, I think, it's for you. <laughs> we also do training with the network on public speaking, campaigning, influencing committees, meeting skills, communication, conflict awareness, training, which really helps our skills and to make the most of our skills that we already have. In 2019, the total amount of time our members spent participating in activities or arranged by, that were arranged by the network were one and a half thousand hours, which is quite a long time. That's a great reflection on the contribution that our members are making. In our last event in October, about being age proud, creating a more realistic narrative around aging, one of the most important things that came out of our discussions at this event was the need to celebrate older people and their contribution to society. 
I am really pleased that Aid Crowd movement is taking off in Greater Manchester. In my local area of Rochdale, we're hoping to hold an event sometime in June. And I've heard older people also speaking about the same message in their areas. I'm going to hand over to you to Liz in a moment. Mr. Video. But before I do this, I'm going to show you a little video on the network for older people and being in each panel. Thank you very much. I think that all of us here today recognise that older people have got a massive amount to contribute in terms of their ideas, their wisdom and their experience. But if people aren't given the opportunity to express these ideas, it stops them being valued. It's quite difficult to imagine being old when you aren't. But when you're old, you think, well, this is a and it was to me a surprise and a delight how pleasant and happy and interesting these last 20 years have been since their time. Absolutely lovely. And then when I look out around, I'm hearing all these messages from the media and the charities of the blue and the doom. Now, this isn't right. It's wrong. Not only is it not right, it's actually wrong. Older people need to be encouraged to stand their ground and speak up about their stories. Older People's Network is doing just that. We're going out to different communities, reaching people nearer to their own homes, so they can tell their amazing stories. And we're trying to get people to express their ideas, talk about the things that matter to them, and to make a difference. There's such invisibility about old people, because we're all busy doing normal things. Noticed the fact that somebody old who actually is running the charity shop, somebody old who is doing out on the hills walking, is not actually noticed because they're not doing anything the animal, they're just doing their normal things. All the People's Network has really helped me develop my confidence. I'm also got lots of opportunities to get involved in things, to get my voice heard, and to speak out and feel valued. If I feel valued, I can feel proud. Human satisfaction with life is at its highest in your mind is because you start enjoying every moment every day you really you, you change your value system you know what you get the same what's valuable in life what's important in life so i am age proud and proud because i say i call it my quality of life i have ambition i have purpose i enjoy going to meetings of the older people's network and particularly meeting people with the same interests and commitments as i have older people have got a massive amount to contribute in terms of their knowledge, their experience and their commitment. And we're committed to being a network that is age proud and positive. Liz Jones and I um, facilitate the Greater Manchester Older People's Network along with Victoria and other colleagues from that. So I know lots of you were here um, at the uh, last H um, Proud event that we had at, um, at St Thomas Centre. And as you can see um, from the video, um, following the event, um, we produced a report and made recommendations. I'm not um, going to talk in any specific detail about, about that report today, um, just because time is quite short. We've, we've got lots of really interesting people to hear from. Um, but if any of you haven't had a chance to have a look through that report yet and would like to, we've got quite a lot of copies that are available in the marketplace, so do um, feel free to go and pick, pick up one um, in the lunchtime and, and have a look through. So in a few minutes, we're going to be starting to think together um, and talk about the priorities for older people in Greater Manchester. 
But before we do that, I just want to say a couple of things um, about the future of the network. So, as I think everybody here knows, the Greater Manchester Older People's Network has been funded through the Ambition for Ageing programme over the last five years. And that um, funding is what's allowed us to do all the fantastic things um, that Elizabeth and um, Jan and Elaine have been, have been talking about. Um, but um, as I think probably everybody knows, that, um, that funding um, finishes at the end of this financial year. Um, we are um, very lucky um, and we're very pleased that Ambition for Ageing have um, agreed to support us by giving us a, a, a small level of funding for next year that will help us manage that transition into becoming more independent. But over the past um, six months or so, we've, we've been having to do quite a lot of work thinking about um, how we explore opportunities for our development next year that are going to be sustainable in the long term. So we did a big development survey last year. I think probably lots of you here, here filled that in, so thank you very much. We had about 200 respondents overall, which was absolutely fantastic from right across Greater Manchester. And um, one of the key findings in that was actually all of our main activities that we do at the moment were valued highly by our members. So whether that was our reports, um, sharing information through the newsletter, the big events like this one, training, um, being involved in participation opportunities or research, um, all of these things were valued, and although um, people's individual priorities <coughs> varied, what was clear was that we needed to make sure that we carried on offering a range of different ways for people to participate. So this was obviously really encouraging for us because it meant that we were doing things right in some way, but I guess it, it, it added that extra level of challenge because it meant that, that people wanted us to carry on everything, so that, that's obviously a, a challenge in itself. Um, but I'm really pleased to be able to share with you today that we've recently been developing a partnership with Manchester University that's actually going to be able to support us to do just that and, and carry on lots of our activities into next financial year. So, more specifically, so I'm going to have to get this right because this is a very long title, um, but the, the partnership is with the University of Manchester Healthy Aging Research Group and Applied Research Collaboration, and it's the Great Manchester um, part on the health on the healthy aging theme. I think I need a round of applause just for managing that. <laughs> So this is a project that we're actually going to be developing as a network in a, in a kind of co-productive way um, and we're going to be doing that alongside the university obviously and, and all, of our, all of our members. But the great thing is that the university really recognises the value of our approach to participation and of older people within the network leading as experts by experience. And they want to keep on um, investing in us and making sure that we can carry on doing the things that our members value. So making sure that the views and experience of older people are, are an absolutely key factor in shaping the future direction of, of research and, and policy making. So I know I, I can see a few of my, our future colleagues from Manchester University on the balcony up there, so I'd just like to say a big thank you um, for recognising the, the value of the network and making sure that we can carry on next year, so thanks very much. Um, we're actually... <laughs> So, um, we're actually looking to hold an introductory event about the project on the 25th of March, and we'll, we'll be sharing more information about this soon. 
So the second thing I want to talk about is the Equalities Board. So we're really excited that next um, financial year for, from April, we're going to be working really closely with, with colleagues from the Equalities Board who've also been part of the Ambition for Aging programme. Um, we're going to be drawing on the expertise of the Equalities Board and all of its members um, and making sure that the Older People's Network is as representative and as inclusive as possible and that Equalities is an absolutely integral part of everything we do. I think this is, it's always been something that's been important to the network um, but I think that huge amount of expertise and knowledge that um, the Equalities Board have built up kind of over this five years is something that we really need to make the most of and, and that'll just be fantastic to integrate that within, within the Older People's Network. Um, We have got another big announcement to make today. I'm not going to I'm not going to steal Andy Burnham's glory by by saying it now. Um, but yeah, as you as you know, Andy Burnham um, is going to be with us later um, this afternoon, and he's going to be announcing a, a big project um, that um, will will be starting from today, really. So yeah, watch this space. Um, I've just seen Hannah holding up a bit of a poster in, in the back there. Um, so Hannah is one of um, my um, colleagues from the Equalities Board, and she just uh, she was just wanting me to share that um, about the event, the Equalities um, the Equalities Board event, which is going to be on the 18th of March. And if people do want to sign up for that then Hannah um, and her colleagues are going to be in the marketplace over lunchtime. Okay, so today is all about um, influencing the agenda for older people in Greater Manchester. And I'm just really pleased that all the positive work that you've been doing over the past five years is um, going to be able to continue um, and that we can continue to influence. So, yeah, that, just thanks everyone for your hard work, really.